CataractCoach.com, why I offer all lens implant options. The bottom line is I want more options and more tools in my toolbox. This is a complete case shown start to finish. So we're going to show you a routine case here. This patient's electing get a newer generation uh, multifocal lens. Now, remember this concept. None of our lens implants that we're implanting in patients today, none are as good as being 25 years old and healthy with a human crystalline lens. None. And the same thing applies to the rest of the body. There are no heart valves or artificial hips that are as good as being 25 years old and young and healthy. Nothing. So there are no man-made body parts that are actually as good as we want. Now, we all want to be young again. At least I do. Now, in this case here, we're going to be putting in, in this patient who's hyperopic, we're going to put in this trifocal or multifocal lens. And it's a fantastic lens, gives great visual outcomes, but it's not as good as what this patient had when, when she was younger. This patient was about a plus two hyperopes. As you know, that, what that means is in youth, there was so much accommodation that there was no need for glasses for anything. The patient had razor sharp distance vision, fantastic near vision, the full range. But then as this patient became somewhere in the mid-40s, she became presbyopic. Because remember, you're still using two diopters for accommodation for the distance vision because she's a plus two hyperope. And then somewhere around the mid-50s, this patient needed glasses for everything. The plus two for distance and then the two add on top of that or plus four equivalent for the reading. So for this patient, once the cataract develops, to get out of all that and go back to at least having no need for glasses is worth the visual compromise of multifocality. Now, I want all the appropriate options because if I had a truly accommodating lens that gave me the vision of a 25-year-old, well, that's the lens you put in every single patient, right? That's ideal, but we just don't have that. So while our lens implant options are amazing, and I'm so thankful to have them, they're not the same as youth. And again, that's common sense. So here we're just flipping this nucleus partially up. There's a chop down the middle, aspirate this thing out. We're going to show you a complete cataract case here shown start to finish. So if you're a young surgeon, this is kind of fun to watch. And again, the lens options you have to offer, you have a job as an ophthalmologist to tailor it to the patient's specific needs. So in this case, this patient's going to be really happy. But think of the opposite. What if this patient was uh, mid-50s and a minus two myope? Let's say the patient had no cataract even. The patient's probably not going to be quite as happy because the near vision achieved by this trifocal or multifocal lens is not going to be as good as the patient's own natural vision at minus two. Now, as we switch over to the IA, let me tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel, so much great material. If you're a cataract surgeon like me, you love cataracts, I promise you're going to love Retina Rounds too. It's meant for all ophthalmologists, not just retina specialists. So we're going to hear cleaning up the cortex. There's a little bit of a lens uh, nuclear chunk there. We can aspirate that down. And again, we want a nice clean capsular bag here and get this all polished up nicely and we'll implant this new lens. So again, as I was, as I was saying, this minus two myope, I can tell you from personal experience, is not going to be happy with multifocality unless there's some pressing need or the patient has a lot of lens opacity. So again, the ones we have to be careful are, do we put this technology in a patient who already has a clear lens, but wants it for refractive reasons? That's an important question here. So again, cleaning up the capsule bag as much as we can here, we could do a little bit of a power wash. Let's put the visqualasic in, maybe polish up the capsule with the lens polisher. And this patient's gonna have a beautiful outcome and be very happy. So I encourage you to do the same. Offer all lens implant options for your patients. And the reason we wanna do that again is that none of them are perfect and we try our best to tailor it to the patient. Now with a multifocal lens or trifocal lens, there is a slight explant rate. And that explant rate may be as much as 1% of patients just don't like the multifocality. So I think we get better with time in choosing who are the right patients. And we try in our clinics to kind of under-promise this lens. That's always a good advice for anything, under-promise and then over-deliver, right? I mean, if I was, I was waiting in line for a restaurant, and they said, oh, it's going to be a 30-minute wait. And I said, okay. And then they said, hey, you know what? After 15 minutes, we're ready for you. I was so happy because I set expectations for 30 minutes and it was, it was under-promised again. Then they over-delivered. They got me seated in 15 minutes. So again, same thing applies. It's human nature. We definitely want to have our patients here very, very happy. So now ensuring that the lens is totally in the capsule bag. You can see this lens has these diffractive rings. This is the J&J Odyssey lens. Again, a very reasonable choice. And again, because of patient selection, this patient's going to be very happy. Always compare what's the pre-op vision compared to the post-op vision. 
So this pre-op vision for this patient was first, you know, limited by cataract. And second, this patient needed plus two distance glasses. And on top of that, plus two for additional reading ad. So this patient now has no distance glasses, no reading glasses, and has a full range. But yes, there are some visual compromises, right? As we always teach you, the number of photons entering the eye is the same. If you focus them all at one focal point with a monofocal lens or focal range, that's going to be really great image quality. But if you split that incoming light over a wider range, you're going to obviously limit the number of photons at each range, and therefore you're going to somewhat slightly limit image quality. Now, in this case, the patient was very happy, but again, it's all about patient selection. And patients who are, let's say, the opposite we talked about, minus two, you may be best, obviously, not doing their surgery until they have very significant cataracts, and they may want to stay at minus two. There's a beauty in that. So here you go. Those are the rings nicely centered. Look, look at the Purkinje images there. You can see the Purkinje images right in the center of that ring. Good rexus overlap. We'll put a little triumph on the end of the case here to help quell any post-op inflammation. Here comes a little bit of myostat to bring the pupil down. And again, here's the last thing, which is preserve free moxifloxacin. That's going to help. Let's make sure the IOP is back to normal. Good job on the pressure. And again, this is a non-toric lens, but we can clean up even if there's a little bit of nystigmas, we can do a small little LRI. These trifocal, multifocal lenses tend to work best with no refractive error. So even if there's a half diopter of astigmatism, even a little LRI like we can do here is going to help to limit that and get the patient more to a spherical outcome. So here's a little fixation ring going down. Here's a diamond. We're going to do just a small limbal relaxing incision at the steep axis just to kind of shave off a little bit of that astigmatism. And again, this patient had a beautiful spherical outcome of emetropia and was absolutely thrilled into the other eye the following week. So again, thank you for watching. I encourage you in your clinic, please offer all lens options so you can tailor it to the patient. And that's until we get our purely combining lens. And remember, check out Retina Rounds, an amazing sister channel. I promise you are going to love it.